Welcome to this week's Swarf and Chips. I'm here at Cogsdills UK headquarters and I'm sitting here in the Model T Ford. I'm not sure what's coming up in this week's show. However, I'm just delighted to be sitting in the front of the car and not in the boot. <coughs> Coming up in today's show, Geo does more than just drive nice cars. He talks metrology and scanning at Dyson Diecasting, a business that was founded almost 100 years ago from Milton Keynes. Now, some of the guys have been on a golf day, so we'll get a sneaky peek at some of their golf skills or not. Anyway, we'll see. Uh, we've got some interesting innovation from Cogsdill and Paul's at Dugard with a focus on some VMC technology. But to begin, Geo drops a forging. Oh no, we're there. He's at Victoria drops for No, Victoria drops it. No, he's at Victoria drop forging. That's the one. Got it. Lindsay, got a real treat here today. I'm at Victoria Drop Forgings in Willanore. Now, this company was founded in 1907 and you're still doing the drop forgings on site. 1907, yes, we started out making keys for the lock industry and then we've progressed to making uh, parts for the war effort, uh, mainly aircraft parts. And uh, we've carried on making aircraft parts, mainly for Rolls-Royce. Uh, we make parts for Titan and we make parts for Aston Martin. Uh, and, and in regards to the components that you're making here, you've still got an active drop forging cell. We still have to do the drop forging. Uh, we have now got the machining uh, capability, but we still have to forge the parts before we can machine them, basically. And you are one of few companies left in the UK that have still got this skill, and it is a skill, isn't it, Mike? Oh, it is a skill, yes. Yeah. It's very difficult to replace people that leave uh, because the skill's built up over a long period of time. And now you've evolved into the CNC's and you've got um, a few roaming machines here yeah. behind us. How, how have you found that trans transition effectively? It was a struggle at first, but we sort of, we got our heads around it uh, and it's been okay. We're, we're up to speed now with, the, with all the Rami machines. And, and as you mentioned, uh, Rolls-Royce, Aston Martin, you're working for some big, big companies. Oh yes, yes, but it's a very niche market. We, we do small batch parts. They only require small batch parts for aero engines. There's not any aero engines made, you see. So that's our sort of saving grace really we don't do enormous contracts yeah well it's been a real insight into what you do here lindsay it's back to you in the studio wow that was an impressive facility i mean it's a forge but it's also a cnc shop why have they done that well, the guy, he only took over a few years ago, didn't he? It, the CNC shop's been going for a good few years, but the mm. company was founded in 1907, and it's evolved since then, so it was a forge, but now they're actually manufacturing um, the forge, uh, forged parts on the CNC machines. Yeah, making a bit more money, because it's a whole process. Yeah, doing yeah. a second sort of stage. But, like I said, going there, I didn't go there because I couldn't cope with the noise. It was absolutely amazing. Yeah, the video doesn't <laughs> do it justice. justice. I mean, the, the floors are vibrating. The <gasps> noise is just, it, yeah. it's just it's unbelievable. I mean, it's a, it's a black art, really. There's not many people left in the country that have got that skill Didn't to do that. Didn't they film Peaky Blinders in there as well? It does look like a, a, a Peaky <laughs> Blinders set, definitely. So, you guys have been enjoying yourselves, but then, what, you're living the dream, what about this golf day? Oh, you see, no This is probably what happened at the show, <laughs> it's not, the day. It's not a jolly, it's serious work, Lindsay. Really? Yep, absolutely. To you? In all seriousness, as Colin would say, <laughs> it was a Krona's 40th year anniversary and they invited us over. They were celebrating with a golf day and they were giving away Ferraris, Aston Martins, Range Rovers. It Have was, you not seen the car it's park? A, it's a little bit special. I <laughs> <laughs> haven't seen the car park. So, who had the best skills, Hold shall on. we say? Can we just suggest, Albert, next time he does a golf day, don't park your Ferrari, your Range Rover, your Aston Martin next to the greens. I didn't hit a car, but... Someone did. No comment. Okay. Geo. So who had the best skills then? Yeah? Uh, Geo. Yeah. Well done. So let's have a look at the video. Thank 
Thanks, Lindsay. MTD on tour. Not quite the PGA tour, but it's the Acrona's 40th year anniversary and they're celebrating it here at North Oxford Golf Club. Now, it's a bit special. They're giving away Ferraris, Range Rovers, Maseratis. I've got my eyes set on this Ferrari. I haven't got much time to talk, but because I've got to go and tee off. I'm See you in a, a bit, Ferrari. Lindsay. I'm having a Ferrari. <laughs> well, I'll have to fight for it. Bye bye. <laughs> But what we're we celebrating? We're celebrating uh, a momentous occasion. We, I've been in business for 40 years. Um, started in 1978 uh, with uh, a couple of people, rubbish machinery, and a lot of hope. Can you not film my car, please? All right. Guys, congratulations! 40 years in business, Albert. What are you looking forward to today? Just a wonderful day with good friends and a few family members. And, uh... <laughs> Dave, MD of Herco Machines, now they are quality, quality machines. How do they compare to your golf? Yeah, the machines are quite a lot nicer actually than uh, my golf. Yeah, they're quite precise, accurate. Yeah. yeah. Completely different, actually, from okay. my golf. Now, I don't want to put you under pressure, and I'd hate this to go on camera or anything like that. Team score for the front nine? Yeah, not that many, really. Um, it, 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 we were warming up. Back nine, we were fantastic. OK. <laughs> it, was double, it was double figures, I can confirm that. That's right. Um, yes, yeah, we had yeah, one, of, one of the boys carried us, fortunately. <laughs> Dave, sorry to do it to you. Thank you very much. I hope you had a good day. Yeah, it was marvellous. It's my favourite golf day all year, obviously. We love a Kroner Engineering. What an amazing day of golf. Colin, you've actually won a prize, haven't you? This is serious. Oh, I've not confirmed yet, but I've, I've got the car keys anyway. You can't have a lift home. But what we want to do as well is photographic or on camera. Albert from a Kroner is buying around. Now that, you need to get yourselves down here straight away, because cheers, Albert. Golf, work, come on. It's not fair, is it? And I like the colour of Colin's shirt, but you should have seen his face was the same colour at the end of the day when you saw his <laughs> scorecard. And I've never seen him run so fast. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. away from that car. Mm -hmm. Anyway, before we talk Dugard, got to let you know, later on in the show, we're going to be talking about something that is close to Colin's heart, measuring small tools. Geo is at Dyson Die Casting. Now, Paul, Dugard. Yes, so I, was, I spent a day at Dugard, uh, specifically... For this show, uh, we're talking about the XP, or well, the video we're going to show in a minute is about the XP range of machines, uh, extra performance machine tools, but as I say, I don't want to go over ground that we're going to see in a minute, so let's cut to the video. Okay. So for a technology feature this week, I'm going to look at two machines here from Dugard, which were launched just over a year ago. They're the XP range. This is the extra performance models of their vertical machining sensors. They are readily available in stock and they're definitely worth a look if you are interested in a vertical machining centre. The first particular machine here is a Siemens controlled machine. Now this as a 760XP comes with the Siemens 828D. Uh, the control here is obviously on, an, on a panel here which can be moved in and out of the machine so when you're programming it's easy to obviously uh, see what's happening in the machine and alter things. Now into the machine here as well, quite interestingly this has actually got a fourth axis, a full fourth axis unit on here with a tail stop. These are options available on these machines. Um, the actual table size on this is 910 millimetres by just over 400 or 400 mil, I should say, with a 760x axis and a 435 mil y axis on the 760xp. Swarf clearance either side, then up to the spindle here. These have 12,000 RPM spindles as standard with 35 bar through coolant. Uh, and the tool changer on this is a twin arm tool changer. It comes actually with 28 tools, but if you did go for the slightly bigger XP machines, the thousands, they do have uh, 36 tools on them. Uh, quite interesting to see that you get some of those features as standard with this machine. As I mentioned, you've got a 35 bar uh, coolant, you've got the swarf augers on the machine. Uh, double doors on this, so for accessing purposes, 
Um, obviously, that's always an advantage to have two doors rather than the one. So this is the Siemens machine, and this is the first of two we're going to look at. If we move across here, we'll then see the same uh, model here, the 760XP, but this one actually has the Fanuc OI control. So you get the option on the XP range whether you want to go to Siemens or other controls which include the Fanuc. Now both the machines here come as standard or come with, with the hand wheels. They also come with air guns. And uh, a couple of neat features I do like about them as well, certainly this one here, is this door here uh, that opens and we've got a storage cabinet to the left of uh, or to the left of me here where you can obviously put, put tool storage and other items that you need uh, that you can keep uh, easily accessible whilst you're actually machining. So the XP range, uh, they, are a, they are a heavy duty machine in fact, um, one heavy duty high quality cast iron uh, construction. They actually come with things as well like uh, 28 uh, sets of pull studs they, they come with as standard here from Dugard. So there's lots of features about these machines where they've tried to add value uh, which you may not get with other machines when you're looking in the market. Um, as you can see on the, the, the footprint on the 760 as well to have that 760 working envelope you've got quite a, um, quite a small machine. So this is a, a bit of a technology feature here from me in Dugard or at Dugard uh, on the south coast in Brighton. You can see these machines on Dugard uh, com or inquire with them at sales at dugard.com. So what else did you see at Dugard? Oh, absolutely loads. Had some mm. special offers as well, which are on the MTD channel. Uh, specifically one to highlight was the RMT250, which is a five-axis machining centre, high-speed spindle, 90 metres a minute in rapid, 1.2 G in acceleration, for £75,000, would you believe? Incredible value. Also, a twin pallet vertical machining centre from Schmeck. We looked at multi spindle turning centres, also mm -hmm. a 52 mil bar sliding head lathe, all on MTD CNC. Ah, well, well, definitely worth a look. Now, thank you, Paul. Now, over to Geo to find out more about how CMMs from Hexagon MI can now be used in conjunction with scanning for a reverse engineering and more. <laughs> Here at Dyson Die Castings, you've invested in the latest technology, this new CMM from Hexagon. Why have you invested in this latest machine and what are the advancements in the technology? The biggest advancement is um, to use the laser, laser scan, which is available for that type of machine. I've never seen the scanning piece of equipment before. Now, is this also used for um, reverse engineering? Yes, uh, currently is used for the normal production runs, uh, doing the first, uh, first of checks, uh, as well as um, reverse engineering. Uh, we can create the CAD model of the physical part. Um, and I would imagine in the, in the production run that using the scanner would speed up the measurement of the components, is that correct? Yes, yes, it's much faster. Um, but at the same time, we're still using it as a normal, normal analog probe, which, which gives us a benefit of speeding up the, the full process of measuring. So you can use both the scanner and the probe? Yes, exactly, at the same time. And this is a large CMM. Does this accommodate for all the size components that you do here? And, and what is the capacity? Uh, capacity at, uh, for that machine is 12, uh, 1200 by 2200 by 1000 uh, by 1000 millimeters so it's pretty big um, i think the benefit from that is because uh, customers creating some massive parts so you, d you never know what to expect so i think the better way is buy the bigger stuff <laughs> so it's giving you versatility now in regards to uh, machining when you're manufacturing components everyone's looking to save seconds but sometimes they um, don't look to save seconds when measuring the parts. Now, is this saving you a lot of time, this new piece of equipment? Yes, especially laser, because we, we can create, of the laser, we can crea create the uh, point cloud, they, they call it as a point cloud, and of that, of that cloud you can pick up as many points, there is a millions of points scanned, of the, of the, on the part. And is it easier to program then? Now, you know, when you had to set everything up with a probe and take lots of hits, using the scanner, is it simplified the way that you're checking the parts and the programs that you've got to write also? Yes, it's, it's, it's very, very easy. It doesn't, maybe it doesn't look simple, but it's very simple. Could so I use it? it? Anybody, I think anybody. <laughs> After the basic training, you can, you can do what you want. Well, there you go. If I can use that, anyone can use it. Back to the studio. 
So before we talk Hexagon MI, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel so you can watch more of our videos. Now, okay, Hexagon MI, we're talking about parts that can measure, you know, big parts like that, and then calling size parts. <laughs> well, before Geo starts, <laughs> um, Hexagon Manufacturing Intelligence, uh, a lot of people will know them from the metrology point of view and also the uh, laser side, which is Leica. However, uh, the group is expanded. You've got Vero Software, which mm -hmm. a lot of engineers will know, uh, Edgecam, Radan, Visi, and other products that they've got, but also MSC Software. They do a lot of software that is for um, different, I won't go through all their uh, products. However, it, when you saw their stand at Mac, it showed the whole um, platform of what they can offer to customers. The brand. Yeah. And because the brand has now brought so many different brands in, so now it's changed the name Hexagon MI. Is that now because it includes all of these brands? It, it does, yeah. And I, I wouldn't think that it'd probably stop there, knowing, knowing the group mm. either. So yeah, mm. re really good products. And a very good video, I like this, because it does show that engineers are using metrology or CMMs in a very, very different way rather than the traditional probing. Yeah, no, definitely. I think what struck me and it's something that I've not seen before, Mark, was the scanning feature on the CMM. Now, in regards to what it does, it's saving time in measuring parts. So in the past, you know, there's a big emphasis on saving seconds from machining time, but people have overlooked saving time in inspection. And this could be a bottleneck area within a company. The actual scanning is checking, especially 3D parts, and our parts have, have evolved as well now with 3D features it's scanning the part very quickly. Right, impressive. Now, Geo, it's not the Geo show this week, is it? Because obviously you were at Hexagon MI, but also you were driving a car, weren't you? Cogsdale. I was driving a car at Cogsdale, and then, but the, the main thing about Cogsdale is their new innovative product that they've just launched. And just to put this into perspective, it's the first time in the world that anyone has launched such a product. So I'm not gonna give everything away Lindsay, but you know, you've got to look at this product. It can save some people an absolute fortune in time. I have the opportunity here to see for the first time this unique, innovative product from Cogsdale. Now, what is it for the people at home? It's a diamond burnishing face milling tool, Geo. And how does this work? Well, basically, it uh, goes on a milling machine and it's for producing good surface finishes on faces. Anything from um, anything better than 0.4 RA. And, and, and why have you seen a gap in the market for this and what operations will this replace? Well it replaces um, lapping or grinding operations and yeah we saw a gap in the market because our customers asked us for it. Uh, Cogstill like to listen to the customers they asked us for a, a solution to produce a good surface finish on a face and we invented this. So basically you're producing a grinding finish or a lapping finish on a milling machine and effectively you could be you could be taking away them operations for your customers. That's exactly right Gio, um, it saves hours. Um, cutting out a lapping or a grinding operation um, and you, you're burnishing instead, saves hours. Well, I could imagine it could save a fortune in, in, in money and time. Now, what kind of sizes do these tools come in? They come in standard milling cutter sizes. And how do they uh, mount to a tool holder? just a milling arbor. It's just a straightforward standard milling arbor. Now, just to kind of tell the customers, own, you are the only people in the world that currently manufacture this tool. Yep, we are the inventors and the manufacturers of this tool. Great innovation, Gio. Absolutely unbelievable innovation. This can save people a fortune. So to learn a little bit more, get in touch with Cogsdale. Now, before we close the show, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. If you want to watch any previous episodes, click on the links here. And as we always say, keep those spindles turning. Now, Gio, what was it like to actually drive the car as opposed to being in the boot this time? Well, I was absolutely delighted to be sitting in the front of the car um, and not in the boot. But technically, it wasn't the case. 